Hi, and welcome back to Coco Sleep. I hope you're enjoying this podcast of original children's bedtime stories and sleep meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Subscribe to Coco Sleep on your favorite podcast app to never miss an episode. New episodes will be waiting for you every Sunday and Tuesday evening, so you can snuggle up and drift off. Do you remember Coco, our little ukulele-loving koala? He's our show's mascot because he knows all there is to know about sleep. Koalas can sleep for up to 22 hours in a 24-hour day, which is impressive, isn't it? It's been a while since we visited him and his family in Sleepy Forest, but tonight we'll return there and join him and his good friend Fudge the Sloth on a walk through the forest. The two friends meet animals along the way who show them where they sleep at night and how cosy those places are. As they talk to more animals, Coco soon realises where his favourite place to sleep is. And it's somewhere that's just perfect for a little koala. Before we get started, take a little time to snuggle down in your bed and make yourself as comfortable as you can. Wriggle your fingers and toes. Maybe move your head around. Point your feet and flex your ankles. And then snuggle down a little bit more. Close your eyes and take some deep, relaxing breaths. And now let's settle into the story. This is Coco's Sleepiest Night by Gillian Rogerson. Deep in the heart of a faraway forest stood a cosy wooden cabin. Inside the cabin lived a family of koalas. The youngest member of the family was called Coco. One late afternoon in autumn, Coco decided to go on a walk through Sleepy Forest. Before leaving his home, he put on a warm coat and wrapped a purple scarf cosily around his neck. He pushed his hands into the deep pockets of his coat and left the family home. The air was crisp and cool, and Coco took some big, relaxing breaths, breathing in and out, in and out. He walked down the steps of the cabin and headed along the path that led into the woodland. He noticed how some of the leaves on the trees had started to change from green to vibrant shades of red, orange and yellow. As he strolled under a canopy of leaves, Coco listened to the birds singing from the treetops above him. Their songs were full of joy and made him smile. A bushy-tailed squirrel scampered through the undergrowth nearby and stopped for a while to gather some fallen acorns in his little paws. The squirrel saw Coco walking by and called out a cheery hello. Coco raised his paw in greeting, said hello to the squirrel and then continued on his way. He pulled his purple scarf more snugly around his neck. His dad had knitted it for him. His dad loved knitting and had made lots of things for Coco, including a blanket for his bed. The blanket was warm and cosy and was perfect for bedtimes. As the little koala thought about his bed cover, he smiled to himself. He loved snuggling beneath it on a night all cosy and warm. A voice called to him from somewhere above him. Hello there, Coco. You look very happy. Coco looked upwards and saw his good friend Fudge the Sloth lying in a tree. 
She had soft fur that was the same colour as dark brown chestnuts. She was nestled in the bough of the tree, her head resting on her arms. Fudge's sleepy, hazel-coloured eyes gazed down at Coco, and a slow smile spread across her kind face. Coco waved and said, Hello, Fudge. You look comfy up there. Fudge let out a happy sigh that was as gentle as a summer's breeze. She said, Ah, I am comfy, Coco. Very comfy. All the trees in the forest. This one is my favourite. The branches are wonderfully wide, and the view from up here is lovely. There's a kind owl who comes here on an evening, and he sings me a lullaby. The sloth let out a long, slow yawn. I love it up here. It's the perfect place to sleep. And thinking about sleep always makes me happy. Coco nodded and told Fudge he liked sleeping too, and that's why he was smiling just then. He was thinking about his lovely bed and how snug and cosy he felt every night when he wriggled down into it. He told his friend about the soft blanket his dad knitted him and how warm it was. Fudge said Coco's bed sounded lovely, and didn't Coco think it was important to find somewhere comfy to sleep? Coco replied, It certainly is. Everyone should have a comfy bed. Fudge, I wonder where the other animals in the forest sleep at night. Do you know? Fudge said she didn't. And perhaps Coco should ask the forest animals about that. She let out a sleepy yawn. Coco thought that was an excellent idea, and he would do that. He asked Fudge if she wanted to come with him and talk to the animals too. Fudge slowly raised her head from her arms and said, Why? Yes, I would love that. Thank you for asking me. Give me a few minutes to climb down to you. Steadily and slowly, Fudge moved along the branch. She stopped a few times to let out some big yawns. When she reached the trunk of the tree, she wound her long arms around it and carefully climbed down. She eventually arrived on the ground next to Coco. She gave him such a big smile that it made her eyes completely close. Coco thought for a moment that Fudge had fallen asleep, standing up. But then she opened her eyes and asked him where they should go first. Coco said, I'm not sure. Shall we just walk along and see who we meet? Fudge nodded and gave him another sleepy smile. The two friends walked through Sleepy Forest. They talked about what they'd been doing that day. Coco said he'd played out with his friends in the meadow, and then he'd had a little swim in the river with his granddad, and after that he'd helped his mum in the garden to plant some flower bulbs that would bloom in early spring. Fudge blinked her eyes tiredly and said, You've had a 
busy day, Coco. I've been busy too. I had a good sleep in my tree, the one I've just climbed down from, and then I walked all the way over to the one next to it, climbed up, and had a sleep there. When I woke, I climbed down and walked all the way back to my first tree and climbed up. I needed a sleep after that. And when I woke up, I saw you walking by. Coco nodded and said, it sounded very much like Fudge had been busy that day, too. On they walked. It wasn't long before they met a big brown bear called Benjamin. He was looking in the grass around the bottom of a tree, as though searching for something. Coco and Fudge said hello to Benjamin and asked what he was looking for. The bear explained he was foraging for food. It would be time for him to settle down for his winter sleep soon, and he needed lots of food to eat before that. He was searching for hazelnuts that had fallen from the tree. Coco and Fudge offered to help the bear. He said thank you and moved over a bit so that the koala and the sloth could forage for hazelnuts too. As they looked through the grass, Coco asked Benjamin where he slept. The bear said, hmm, It depends on the time of day. I like having a snooze or two during the day, and if I'm on one of my walks, I'll find a shady area in the corner of a meadow and settle down there for a nap. Sometimes I'll snuggle down behind some fallen tree logs. Often I'll climb a tree and have a nap there too. Fudge smiled and said she loved sleeping in trees. She yawned. Benjamin yawned, too. He then told Fudge and Coco that his favourite place to sleep was a cave at the foot of a small hill. It wasn't far away at all, and he was heading there now to store his food. He asked if they'd like to come with him. The koala and the sloth nodded. They collected more hazelnuts and then walked with Benjamin to his cave. It didn't take them long to reach the cave. They went inside. It was pleasantly warm and cosy. The animals placed the harvested hazelnuts at one side of the cave next to a collection of seeds and dried berries. Benjamin pointed to a pile of leaves in the corner of the cave and said that's where he slept of a night. He told them he'd collected the leaves that very morning and they still had the smell of sunshine on them. He explained how welcoming and cosy his cave was after he'd been out exploring the forest all day and how he could sleep for hours and hours on the soft leaves. Coco said Benjamin's leafy bed looked extremely comfortable. Fudge agreed, and then let out a long, long yawn. Benjamin yawned too, and so did Coco. Benjamin said, 
I feel somewhat sleepy all of a sudden. I think I'll have a little nap. There are other piles of leaves around my cave. I collected extra this morning. You're welcome to lie down on the leaves too. I think you'll like how soft they feel. The bear moved over to his bed of leaves and lowered himself onto them. He yawned again, closed his big brown eyes and promptly fell asleep. A second later, the low rumbling sound of his snores echoed around the cave like quiet thunder. Fudge put her hand over her mouth to cover up another yawn. She said, Perhaps I'll have a rest too, just for a little while. I've never slept in a cave before, or on a bed of leaves. She lay on the nearest pile of leaves and closed her eyes. She started to yawn softly. Coco had never slept in a cave before either, and he was curious to see what it felt like. And he was a bit tired too, so maybe a rest was just what he needed. He moved over to a little bed of velvety soft leaves and laid himself down. The smell of sunny days drifted from the leaves and surrounded him like a gentle summer's cuddle. Coco fell into a light slumber. He too began to snore. The melody of gentle, low snores coming from the snoozing animals floated out of the cave and across sleepy forest. Animals who heard it stopped what they were doing and yawned too. Some of them felt drowsy and wondered if they should go to bed early that night. After a short, restful nap, Coco woke up and stretched out his little arms and legs. The soft rustling of the leaves beneath him made Fudge wake up too. She smiled over at Coco and in a whisper said she felt very rested. Coco whispered back, Me too. These leaves are very comfy and soft. Benjamin is still asleep. Let's leave him in peace. They quietly left the sleeping bear to his dreams. They headed further into the forest to find out where other animals settled down to sleep on a night. They came across a mother rabbit who was resting in the long swaying grass. Her bunnies were lying at her side and gazing dreamily at the sky. Coco and Fudge said hello to the rabbits. Coco asked the rabbits where they slept at night. The mother rabbit said, We have burrows beneath the ground, and when twilight approaches, we go down into them and snuggle into our beds. It's cosy and warm in our burrow. Sometimes we go down there in the day when it rains. We love listening to the sound of the raindrops falling onto the ground above us. 
is so soothing and restful. Talking about sleep made the mother rabbit yawn. The little bunnies at her side began to yawn too. Fudge joined in with them. And even though he'd recently had a nap, Coco also let out a yawn. He just couldn't stop himself. The mother rabbit glanced at her little ones and said they looked as if they were ready for an early bedtime. They'd been playing out all day and it was now time for them to rest. She said goodbye to Coco and Fudge and then gathered her children together. She led them down into their deep, cosy home beneath the ground. The smallest bunny gave the koala and the sloth a sleepy goodbye wave before disappearing into the burrow too. Coco noticed Fudge's eyes kept closing and kindly asked if she'd like to go back to her tree. Fudge said, Not just yet. Thank you. It's interesting to see where everyone sleeps. I'd like to find out more. The two friends carried on through the forest and discovered more about the animals who lived there. The sun dipped below the horizon and the sky started to turn a darker shade of blue. Coco and Fudge saw a couple of hedgehogs who were about to settle themselves beneath a hedgerow for the night. The leaves of the bush were heavy with ripe red and purple berries. The two friends stopped to talk to the prickly animals and asked if they always slept under the hedgerows. The biggest hedgehog said, We sleep in many places, but this is one of our favourites. It's lovely to sleep here, and if we get hungry, we can nibble on these delicious berries. He told them more about the other cosy places they sometimes slept in. Under warm piles of soft leaves, some freshly fallen that day. Between snug rocks that were covered in fragrant moss and delicate flowers. Now and again, the hedgehogs came across underground burrows which were empty because the animals who'd made them had moved on to other homes. The other hedgehog said the burrows were dark, warm and snug and they always had a good sleep in them. Talking about the burrows made the hedgehogs yawn. They said it was time for their sleep and invited Coco and Fudge to join them under the hedgerow. There was a gap further along and it would be the perfect size for a koala and a sloth to snuggle into. Coco asked Fudge if she'd like to do that. Fudge said she'd better not, because the hedgerow looked so welcoming, she was certain she'd fall asleep straight away, and she wasn't quite ready for her nighttime sleep just yet. Coco and Fudge thanked the hedgehogs for their kind offer, said goodbye, 
and continued walking through Sleepy Forest. The sky grew a shade darker. Coco pointed upwards and told Fudge the first star of the night had appeared. It twinkled brightly in the sky like a diamond. As they carried on walking, they met more animals who were settling down for sleep. They talked to a green freckled lizard who was lying on a large rock that had been warmed by the sun. He said he would probably stay there all night because it was so comfortable and it meant he would also get an excellent view of the moon when it appeared. Coco and Fudge walked past hippos, wallowing happily in the warm river. Some were resting at the side of the water with their eyes closed and appeared to be fast asleep. The two friends talked to the hippos who still had their eyes open and found out that the large animals often fell asleep in the river. Now and again, they would sleep on the warm riverbank in the soft, squishy mud. Coco and Fudge met other animals. They didn't talk to all of them, because some were already fast asleep. As they went on their way, they waved goodnight to a family of lions who were settling down in the long, swaying grass of a meadow. A couple of lions were asleep and snoozing in trees. Coco and Fudge saw bushy-tailed squirrels curled up inside cosy tree hollows. Looking upwards, they watched a family of birds getting ready to climb into a nest that was made of golden-coloured straw. A collection of silver-tipped butterflies alighted on a tree trunk their wings flapping slower and slower until they came to a stop. There were so many of them that it looked like the tree was wearing a silver blanket. The little koala and his friend walked on further. Fudge yawned now and again, causing Coco to yawn a little too. More stars appeared in the navy blue sky. A full moon was visible through the treetops and shone down over sleepy forest. From somewhere in the distance, there came the gentle sound of an owl hooting. Fudge yawned more and more, and her steps became slower and slower. Coco asked if she'd like to rest for a little while. With a sleepy smile, she said she wouldn't but perhaps it was time they headed home. Coco agreed. He put his arm around his tired friend and helped her along the way back to her tree. All around them, the animals of the forest settled down for the night. A calm, quiet hush fell over the trees. From between the trees, a twinkling cloud of fireflies appeared. 
they flew towards the two friends and offered to light the way home for them. Coco and Fudge thanked them and followed the bobbing lights of the fireflies through the forest. When they arrived at Fudge's tree a short while later, the sloth thanked Coco for taking her on such a wonderful journey of discovery. Even though she had loved finding out about the different places the animals slept, she was perfectly happy with her tree, as it was the perfect place for a tired sloth to sleep. Fudge looked up at her tree and blinked drowsily. She told Coco she was too tired to climb it. Coco said he would help her. Together they slowly went up the tree and on to Fudge's favourite branch. She told Coco he was welcome to sleep on the branch too, as there was plenty of room. The little koala said no thank you, because he wanted to go home to his comfy bed inside the family's cosy cabin. Coco said good night to Fudge and watched as she made herself comfy on the branch and wrapped her long arms around it in a hug. With one last sleepy smile at Coco, she closed her eyes and rested her head on the branch. She was still smiling as she fell asleep. Coco whispered, Good night, Fudge. Sweet dreams. Coco climbed down the tree and headed home. The friendly fireflies kept in company all the way. Once home, the little koala took off his coat and purple scarf. He hung them up and then helped his dad prepare the evening meal. When the family of koalas sat down to eat, Coco told them all about his day, talking about where animals fell asleep made him yawn and yawn again. He didn't know he had so many yawns inside him. His family yawned too. After a warm, lavender-scented bubble bath, the tired little koala was ready for his bed. His mum tucked him into bed and read him a lovely story about a dragon who loved to dance. As he listened to the sleepy tale, Coco's eyes grew heavier and heavier. His mum finished the story, kissed Coco goodnight, and left his bedroom. Coco snuggled down in his bed under the knitted cover his dad had made. He thought about the animals in the forest and all the lovely places they liked to sleep. As wonderful as they were, he knew his bed was the very best place for him to sleep. 
It was soft, warm, and cosy, and just perfect for a little koala. He gazed through the window at the full moon and wondered if Fudge was looking at it too. Or was she still fast asleep in the comfy bough of her tree? Thinking about his friend made Coco smile. He let out a long, long yawn and snuggled down even further into his bed. He soon fell into a deep, deep sleep. Outside, the animals of Sleepy Forest slumbered peacefully throughout the night.